Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com and Welding-TV.com. This week we are jumping right into vertical uphill, 3G butt joint in aluminum, 11 gauge aluminum. That's eighth inch thick and it's 6061. I've got the machine amperage set to about 140 amps but using a foot control. So I'm only using 100 to 125 amps for most of the joint. AC frequency set to 70, AC balance 65, 332 2% lanthanated electrode rounded, 332 40 43 rod, number 7 gas lens with about 14 CFH of argon. And the first thing is to get some good sized tacks on the ends. You see I add a little bit of extra rod, could use a little bit more than that, wouldn't hurt a thing. Aluminum tacks are really weak, you got to add more rod than you do on say stainless steel or steel. Now, once you get it tacked, you want to find a comfortable way to prop and position yourself. See, I'm propping here with a TIG finger. I'm just going to slide that right up the joint because that's that's my product and of course I want to show it. But it does work great on stuff like this because that thing saturates with heat really quick and you'll have to prop on a 2 before or something if you, if you don't have that prop in your pocket. So the way to do when you get started off on aluminum joints like this is you got to kind of let the let the heat build up for just a few seconds before you start. Watch the puddle sink before you start adding rod and then you want to take off and get in your rhythm. And I'm showing you the back side of this thing just because I think it's kind of unusual how that puddle forms. Aluminum doesn't change color when it gets hot. It's just kind of interesting to watch it penetrate and uh, form the penetration on the on the back side. See on the bottom here, I'm, I'm a little too ginger wanting not to melt that tack away and the, for the first uh, quarter inch or so you see it kind of left that line, didn't quite penetrate and that is always an issue with aluminum joints like this. But what you want to do is, is uh, step ahead roughly an eighth of an inch and pause while you add rod and you want to do that about once a second. And if you can get in that kind of a rhythm where you move ahead the same amount, wait the same amount of time before you add rod, keep your arc length and torch angle the same, and keep moving the same, you're going to have some pretty decent uniformity with your ripple spacing being uh, pretty even. That's what makes for a uniform looking bead is keeping all those things the same or relatively the same. Now I'm going to tie in here, I'm doing a back step motion on this joint instead of welding it from start to finish. When I tie in I've got to slow down a little bit, let the heat soak into that previous weld, maybe add just a little bit less filler wire and then at the end I've got to add a little bit more, a few extra drops of filler wire and then move the torch around as I taper off otherwise it'll crack. That's always a problem when you're tying into a joint uh, a previous weld like this on aluminum is leaving a fine fine crack. Usually you can only see it with a magnifying glass. All right. Let's do a little review and talk about some other areas where a TIG finger really comes into play. Uh, just a few weeks ago I did a horizontal joint like this. You can see I'm pointing the rod, I'm pointing the electrode upwards a little bit and I'm adding the rod to the top of the puddle. This, this is magnified quite a bit, so probably at least, uh, you know, three times what it is. It's a lot bigger than what it actually appeared to be, but that's so you can see the detail. Other, other uh, situations are like a, a joint like this where maybe if you don't uh, aren't comfortable with walking the cup you can prop your, the, the TIG finger and move the uh, electrode side to side and get that kind of a weld pattern just like you can when you're walking the cup or at least almost like you can. Depends on who you are and everything. For 6G test joints TIG finger is ideal. You can see I'm propping right next to the weld there. If you've ever done this before I don't have to tell you the heat builds up it's a problem. You get to where you just you can almost make your weld. You don't want to stop because you're taking a test. You don't want to make an extra tie in and your fingers are cooking. And you know exactly what I'm talking about if you've ever done this before. It really helps on a 6G joint. For small diameter 6G tests like this 2 inch, for root pass, key holing where kind of travel speed moves on kind of slow, heat really builds up and you've either got to prop really far away from the joint or you're just going to have to stop when your knuckles get to screaming. For sanitary stainless tubing like this, the tubing is really smooth and polished on the outside and the TIG finger make, lets you slide along, make nice little increments, really helps with the uniformity of your weld and your hand doesn't get hot. For little small aluminum joints like this where the heat saturates, this is an outside corner joint, vertical uphill, and the heat builds up really quick and if you're trying to prop on the metal itself, you're not going to do, you're not going to hang in there that long without some kind of pro, uh, heat resistance on the material. For small round parts like this that you don't want to lay on the table or maybe you have to put them up in a vise like this and you want to go all the way around them without stopping, 
the TIG finger will let you do that. It'll let you prop and just kind of ease all the way around a joint like this without stopping. Now, I try really hard to provide no BS videos every week without having to beat somebody over the head, asking them to buy something all the time. In fact, it's kind of uncomfortable for me to do so. But the bill's got to be paid every now and then, so I've got to uh, feature a product every now and then and, and see if I can get paid back for all the time I spend making weekly videos. So I have a new website welding store. It's called uh, the Weldmonger Store. It's at www.weldmongerstore.com. That's where you can buy TIG fingers, t-shirts, and uh, the 2012 DVD compilation that's got over seven hours worth of videos on it from 2012. So if you want to learn more about TIG fingers or any of the other products like the, the 2012 DVD, just go to www.weldmongerstore.com. Check it out and we'll see you here next week.